Hey everybody, Doug Rucker here, PressureCleaningSchool.com and DougRuckerStore.com. Hey, I had a viewer request about doing a video on winterizing your pressure washing equipment. So, a couple of tips and tricks coming up that may help you for winterizing your pressure washing and soft washing equipment coming next. Okay, so for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using this trailer rig that has a nine gallon per minute cold water machine, also has our King Slinger 10 gallon per minute soft wash machine. And I guess I need to tell you right off the bat here in the Houston, Texas area, we don't have to winterize very often. We probably winterize maybe two, three times um, during the winter, and usually it's just overnight. Um, just trying to be protective and proactive. If the temperature dips below 32 for a few hours, then I will run or winterize uh, my equipment. But again, it's not very often. And what we use is RV um, antifreeze. It's a uh, not as strong as regular antifreeze, but uh, and, and of course is a lot cheaper. But you know, if I was up north where we got you know, several days of uh, temperatures below 32 or even putting it away from the for the winter, I would definitely use regular antifreeze. So basically, I'm going to tell you how I uh, how we winterize our equipment. This is the water inlet that comes off of your water tank into your machine. We actually use cam lock fittings so that we can disconnect and drain the hose if we need to. But most often, most guys are gonna have a hose barb like this. And so either way, the system that I use um, is pretty easy to do and pretty easy to winterize your equipment. Um, whether you, you have a hose barb coming off like this or whether you have uh, the cam locks like I do, um, in this situation, if you have a hose barb, then you're just going to take your hose off that's going to your tank and put on another one. But I'll explain that in a minute. But basically, when you're winterizing your equipment, you're using antifreeze to keep the water in the pump, in your hoses, um, anywhere water could be, you're keeping it from freezing um, and causing damage to your system or your hoses, things of that nature. So that's the reason that we winterize. Um, again, in colder weather where you uh, have, have freezing temperatures for days in a row or you're, you're in an area where you, ha you actually shut down for the winter, then again, using the stronger regular strength antifreeze is your best method. I know some guys will use an air hose and just blow all the water out of it. I've never done it that way because I've never needed to but that is an option um, that you can do too. I just find this way is much easier and much faster for me. And I actually just feel better knowing that the antifreeze is in the system and in the hoses. So basically guys, like I was saying, we have our inlet off the pump where the water comes in off the tank and we're using cam lock fittings. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unpop uh, the banjo fitting there that's going to the pump. Uh, the water, of course, will drain out unless we put a cap on it. But when I'm winterizing, I kind of want all the water out of the tank anyway. So I would let all that drain out. And then basically we're going to put a, another hose connected to the cam lock fitting like this. And I run that hose over to just a five gallon bucket like this. Um, and I have that filled up with the antifreeze or the RV um, maintenance. Uh, RV antifreeze is what it's called. It's, it's good for like 52 degrees below supposed to be. Um, but again, we don't get the, you know, the really bad winters like a lot of people up north do. But um, basically run that hose to that bucket with the antifreeze in it. 
and fire the machine up like you normally would. And that's, that's basically acting as your water feed tank. So if you've got a good belt drive unit, then that's going to create, uh, that machine is going to create a vacuum. And it'll suck that antifreeze up through the machine and then send it on down to your hose. And so um, stay tuned for the next slide. I've got a uh, special tip on when you actually have the antifreeze running through your hose, which is very important. But again, this is the setup um, basically that I use is very simple, very easy. And again, we use RV maintenance antifreeze, but if you're up north shutting down for the winter, lots of overnight, uh, under 30 degrees, under 32 or whatever, then you definitely want to use the stronger, uh, green antifreeze stuff for vehicles and, and things of that nature. All right, guys. So when you start your machine up, you've got your ball valve open. And so the antifreeze will start drawing through your system and eventually come down your hose. And I can usually tell by the color of the water, it's going to be a different color. So once it gets to the end um, and coming out of the ball valve, then you want to stop it, um, turn your ball valve. That way it gets into the uh, bypass hose of your system and uh, we'll get the antifreeze into that and a little bit into the little bit of water in your tank. So it'll keep that tank water from overflowing or not overflowing, but freezing as well. And then once you're done, make sure you open that ball valve back up and leave it open. Um, just in case anything, you always want the hoses open. That way, if uh, you did have a freeze or water, you know, started freezing, it won't expand the hose. It'll just continue to kind of freeze going on down the line and it won't uh, bust your hose. So always remember to open that ball valve back up when you're done and leave it. Hey, as always, don't forget, if you're getting value out of this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notifications every time I come out with a video. Thanks so much for watching. Most importantly, please leave a question, leave a comment if I can help you in any way. Just love helping you new guys getting started in this business. Thanks so much for watching and here's more of the video. Then once I'm totally done and I know I've got all of uh, the antifreeze through the machine, into the tank, through the bypass, all of that, then I reconnect my cam lock fittings back to the tank just so it's not laying loose. And I, I really just don't want the pump open like that. Now, what, a couple other tidbits for you too. If you've got guns, downstream injectors, and all that kind of stuff that you're going to leave on your trailer, then of course, you know, run a little bit of antifreeze through those as well. Um, I think if I lived up north, I would just take all my guns and wands and downstream ejectors and anything like that that has water that goes through it and probably just take them and put them inside the garage, wrap them in a blanket or put them in a box or, or something instead of going through the hassle of um, running all that, you know, antifreeze through each little piece. It could just be a little time consuming depending on how many wands and guns that you have, that type of thing. But anything that water um, is going to go through. You want to make sure that you're going to get antifreeze through it so it does not freeze. But like I said, if you're like me and, uh, you know, I lived up north, I would just take all my guns and wands inside. That way I don't have to, again, fool with the time of getting antifreeze through all those. So if you're going to take them inside and protect them, wrap them in a blanket, put them in a box, whatever, then there's probably no need to run the antifreeze through those. Hey guys, hey, just a quick reminder too, if you're uh, getting value out of this video and uh, my channel, hey, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I come out with a video. Um, hit that like button and uh, leave me a question or comment. Most important thing, leave me a question. That way, if uh, anything I can do to help you guys and I can answer you pretty quickly, I try to answer all questions on my channel. So I'm uh, not just a guy that posts videos and then, you know, gets lots of comments, but never responds back. I truly want to try to help you guys. So um, subscribe, hit the bell for the notification, question, comment, um, would much appreciate it. So now we're going to talk about the 
uh, Kingslinger soft wash system. And this is this would pretty much adapt to any type of soft wash system that you have, whether it's 12 volt or booster. Um, I don't know about the gas powered. I've had one of those before, but I've never had to winterize it, but I'm sure it'd be pretty much the same thing. It's just a matter of getting antifreeze through the system. But here on the Kingslinger, you see we've got the three GF valves. And again, they've all got the cam lock fittings. So it's really just a matter of uh, taking um, that, uh, that hose that's got the cam lock fitting on it and snapping it onto your valve. And I would just do one valve at a time until you get um, some of the antifreeze or you get the antifreeze going through that uh, valve as well as your pump down to the hose and the same thing. Um, you know, turn the ball valve on and off or whatever. You actually don't have a bypass, but just still a good idea to turn it on and off just so you can make sure um, that it's coming through. Um, so it basically looks like this, which is very similar to the pressure washer. Um, it's really just a, a, this is a half inch hose, just the same thing that's on the system itself. Um, and again, you just, uh, turning valves on and off and you can leave the compressor running, open up the valve, um, get it running through the hose. And then, um, you know, once you've got that first valve done, then it's just a matter of turning that valve off, moving the uh, cam lock over to the other valve, turning that valve on, um, just for a few seconds, just enough to get it through that valve and then through the pump, um, which it's already through the pump and the hose. So it doesn't really take but a couple of seconds just to get it through the valve, um, then turn that valve back off and go to the next one, so on and so forth. And so um, that's basically how you would do your soft wash system. If it's a 12 volt, just the same thing, just suck a little bit and a freeze into that pump. And again, um, get it, you know, so it goes all through the hose and then of course leave that ball valve open when you're done. Um, just in case there's any problem, um, you're not going to have a freeze and expansion of the hose and cause it to bust the hose. Um, like I discussed in the pressure washer, there's not a really a whole lot for the air compressor itself that you can do other than before you turn it off for the season, make sure you drain the water out of the tanks, the barrel tanks completely. Um, both, you know, do it on high uh, where you turn that valve and you turn it on the high pressure and then kind of tighten it down a little bit or open it a little bit or just just so when it can do, you know, low, it's not just blasting out because sometimes when it's blasting out, it's not going to get all that water because that water is moving around in the tank. So you want to get it to where it's kind of a, a low pressure coming out as well. But that's basically it in the winterizing. Very simple. Again, if you have any questions or anything I can help you with, um, just let me know. Hit that subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Give me a like and a comment. But most importantly, I love questions um, anytime you guys have them. Appreciate uh, the viewer that requested this. He and his son. Um, sorry, I'm a little late getting it out there, but uh, hope this guy's I hope this helps you guys and uh, y'all have an awesome Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving week next week. Um, probably when y'all are watching it, it's Thanksgiving week and I'll be in Florida on vacation. Y'all have an awesome day. Hey, uh, if you held on this long past the end, I want to reward you guys and uh, DougRuckerStore.com. We're having a Thanksgiving weekend sale. So if you need any fittings, you need any guns, wands, uh, X-Jets, soaps, uh, you know, King's Cling, wrap, dugout degreaser, whatever you need. Hey, I want to reward you guys for being loyal to my channel and want to get you set up with a special discount. So uh, hit me up with an email at pressurecleaningschool at gmail.com. And I'll get you a uh, discount that you can make uh, use for future purposes, future purchases. And also, like I said, don't forget our uh, Thanksgiving weekend sale. Going to have a lot of things on sale that weekend. Uh, it'll start Thanksgiving Day and run probably through the end of Monday. So be sure to check it out at DougRuckerStore.com. And y'all have again, have a blessed Thanksgiving.